<laughs> Praise the Lord. Wretched Knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Billy Jr. Brothers and sisters, if we turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, and it reads, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word, taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, Jesus was dealing with um, feisty uh, characters when it comes to the disciples. And there was this one in particular that he dealt with that was feisty and just kind of out of control. And no, it wasn't Peter. It was John. You know, in Luke chapter 9, it records of a time when there was a gentleman that was casting out devils. And John and the disciples took notice of that. And they chased him out and said, you know, you're not following us. And, you know, and, and started, for, you know, rebuking this man who was casting out devils. And then John, feeling proud of himself, he came up to the Lord Jesus and said, Oh, uh, Master, we saw one that was casting out devils in your name, and we um, chased them out because they don't, they, he didn't follow us. But then the Lord said to John, um, forbid him not. He that is not against us is of us. And then there was another occasion when <clears throat> our Lord and Savior Jesus was um, you know, going to a meeting place in Samaria, and he met up with some Samaritans and they were giving the Lord Jesus a hard time because the Samaritans and the Jews, um, they didn't get along. And um, the, the John and his brother James took notice of, of uh, the Samaritans giving the Lord Jesus a hard time. And then John and James went to the Lord and said, uh, Master, um, shall we pray for fire to come down on these um, Samaritans just like um, Elijah uh, prayed for fire to come down and then the Lord Jesus said to John and James um, you know not what spirit you are for the son of man did not come to destroy lives but came to save lives and so we see John was a really feisty angry person but <clears throat> lo and behold when 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 going through our lord and savior jesus christ earthly ministry and then maturing to the apostle john he now was saying things like beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god and and so what happened between that feisty, angry disciple that was chasing out people that were doing good things and and wanting to pray for the murder of people to where he's now saying these nice, lofty things. Well, the, the, the Apostle John's ministry was such that he made it a prerogative and it was his pleasure and it was his privilege to personalize, to practice, and to pursue God's love for him. You know, in the Apostle John's gospel letter, the book of John, five times, five times, five being the number of grace, he referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. John chapter 13, verse 23. John chapter 19, verse 26. John chapter 20, verse 2. John chapter 21, verse 7. John chapter 21, verse 20. Where the apostle John is referring to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. 
not the disciple who loves Jesus, but the disciple whom Jesus loves. A, a, a love where where he he was at the, the Lord's bosom, at the upper room, where he's sharing that tender moment, where the Apostle John records the, 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 that, 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 that time, that occasion in his um, in his gospel letter of the book of John. And again, and it was, a, he made it a, a ministry where he, it was a prerogative to, to, to practice the love that God had for him. Made it a prerogative. And it was his privilege to his pleasure to personalize. I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. To, to, to practice and to pursue this love that God has for him. And it was such that, that it just transformed his life where he could say things like in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, where he says, herein lies love. Not that we love God, but that God loves us and gave his son to be a propitiation for our sins. For, that, 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 that making it a prerogative and, and, and to, to his, uh, like a privilege, to his pleasure, to personalize, to practice, and pursue God's love for him. And such that where, as we have just read, a love that is so powerful that there is no fear in this love that God has for you that God has for the, that that one that wants to personalize, practice, and pursue this love. There's no fear in that love. No, no kind of fear where you're a fear of failure, a fear of success, a fear of people's opinion, a, a, a fear of maybe God's not going to carry out His promise. No, when you are personalizing and practicing and pursuing this love, making it a prerogative and taking, making it a, your privilege and taking pleasure of it. There's no fear in that love that God has for you because that perfect love, it casted out that fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of what people's opinion are, or the fear that God is not going to carry out his promise. No, it cast it out. Because fear, this, this fear, that fear, uh, that, that, that cowardice, the timidity, the, the several fear, it has torment. And when you, when you practice that love, that, that, that the apostle John, the apostle of God's love, that agape love, it's going to cast out all those negative fears. And then watch this because fear hath torment. And he that feareth has not made perfect in God's love. And, 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 and what's a way to, you know, to do like as the Apostle John, who again made it a prerogative to, and, and it made it, a, it's, it's, it was his privilege to his pleasure to personalize this love. I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. Five times he said, five the number of grace. To, to practice it, it's, say, Hey, waking up every morning, wake up, going through the days, just practicing it and pursuing it, pursuing that love that God has for him. And 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 how 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 did he do this? How did he do this? Just just saying that God loves me. I'm 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 the beloved of of, of the Lord. I'm accepted of the Lord. Saying and to saying that, and when doing that, it's going to there's there's not going to be any fear. 
It's, it's gonna it, that that perfect love, the love that God has for you. God's love for you is perfect. He has it for you, and you you you, you personalize it, you you pursue it, you participate in it, you practice it. That ministry of the Apostle John, where again the, 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 such a ministry that he was there at the bosom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In that intimate moment, he was there at, uh, at our, our Lord and Savior Jesus when he was at the cross. Because he was personalizing it. He was practicing it and he was pursuing it. You know, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where he says, Now the Lord is that spirit. That spirit where God loves you. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty to live, liberty to learn that much God loves you. And the liberty to be all that God has called you to be. Because you know that God loves you. And then I like what the apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Where he says, when we with an open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, that glory of the Lord, that God loves you. And when you when beholding the glory of the Lord in a glass, watch this. We are going to be changed to the same image. His, his, his beauty, his perfection, his excellency, when you're beholding it, you're being changed into the same image. And when you're changed to the same image, that's, that's casting out those fears. That's casting out those, uh, everything that's negative. When you're beholding that glory, you're being changed to the same image from glory to glory. And that glory to glory is when you do it as the Apostle John has done. Make it a prerogative to his privilege, unto his pleasure, to personalize this love that God has for you. I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. To practice it from glory to glory and to pursue it from glory to glory even the same spirit of the Lord. And so, when he was one time a mean spirited to the apostle John, writing these beautiful books, five of them, five being the number of grace, and, and and emphasizing or uh, the love that God has for you where we know John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world uh, uh, and, and in his other letters and even in in, in in the book of Revelation when he opens up the first time that he's talking about the love that God has for us, where he says in Revelation chapter one, verse five, where he says, and he loved us and with his own blood, he washed away our sins. So he loved us with his shed blood. He washed away our sins and made us kings and priests. And, and when you, when you know that, that truth, Making that a prerogative uh, unto your pleasure. Making it a privilege to personalize, to practice, and to pursue this love of God. The love that God has for you. You're going to see that there's going to be no fear in this love. Because that perfect love is going to cast out all fears. Cast out all negative uh, uh, thoughts and things that are not of God. Cast it out. 
because fear and all these negative things have torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So let's take suit of the Apostle John. Know that God loves you. And when you know that God loves you, you're in a position to be all that God has called you to be. Receive all that God has for you to receive. And then you shall understand where he says that uh, we love God because God first loved us. And then when we know how much God loves us, praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're going to love God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord May the Lord bless you May the Lord keep you May the Lord's face shine upon you May the Lord lift up his conscience you. May the Lord give you his peace And I commend you all to God And to the word of his grace Which is able to build you up in inheritance To those who are sanctified In the precious name of his son Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen And now to him that is able To keep you from falling Present you forth In the presence of his glory Both glory, majesty, dominion, power Both now and forevermore Amen <laughs> Brothers and sisters God loves you Receive that love. Walk in that love. Make it a prerogative to make it a privilege to unto your pleasure to personalize this love that God has for you. To practice this love that God has for you and pursue it. Because he loves you. And when that happens, wow. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Agape <laughs> Love <laughs>